on track. Somebody say get back on track. And so there's a purpose for things happening in our lives, brothers and sisters. It's not all bad. It's a divine purpose in mind when God allows things to happen to you and I. God is interested in getting some real productivity out of our individual lives. That's all your care. Educating us, renewing our mind, our thinking, changing our, uh, our concepts and perceptions, and all of these things here. And he says, if you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So freedom will come as we continue in the Lord. So we're on a journey, we're on a journey with God. Praise God. And so... Uh, as we open to God's varied operations, God may heal you and I in our prayer time. All right, that's just one way, right? God may heal you and I when we confess our faults with one another with a trusted friend, somebody or some leader, and pray for one another. Am I right? That's what the Bible says. God may heal you and I through laying on of hands. Isn't that right? God may heal you as you sat under the word preached, right? God may heal you when you are ready and studying the word of God, reading and studying God's word, right? God may heal you as you submit to leadership, right? God may heal you through counseling, right? God may heal you through just standing on the word, right? God may heal you as you come into the sanctuary and obey the voices of his prophets, right? So God is multifaceted. God is a God that can do anything, and he does it any way he wants to. But for us, we must not be stagnated uh, by looking that if he doesn't do it this way, so on. So God is varied in his marvelous, wonderful approach to healing. Some of us may be looking for God. Some may say, well, I can just go home and pray about it. I don't need to go up there. And that may be true, but not all of your healing is going to come that way. Only a small portion of your healing or my healing will come through our devotional prayer time. If you believe that, if you, if you believe contrary to that, I'm hoping that this will open your understanding. God won't be in a box. And so his, his healing power is varied. So the point is now the revelation of bringing healing to our hearts is the design of the Spirit of God to cause us to progress in our lives. It can cause marriages to be br brought back together. It can cause people that are at odds with their parents, or father or mother. It can cause them to forgive and find favor and blessings with their parents. It can cause a son or daughter to come back to their parents as they forgive. The healing will cause people to see straight and understand more clearly God's divine purpose of love. It is just so many things that when a person's life 
uh, receive and embrace the healing power and love of our Savior. What I feel God is saying, let's open ourselves to the revelation, to the vision of bringing healing and restoring people in the way, that, in, the, in the manner in which he wants to do and what he is, what he is purposed to do in, his, in, in our lives. So healing is the children's bread. Amen? Healing is the children's bread. And I believe that he wants us to embrace. Okay, Lord, if you, if you want to heal me, then I'm opening myself wide for you to heal me because you know my life better than anybody else, right? I may look like I'm okay, but I may not be okay, right? And so it's important for us to open to the Lord what God has, wants to do. Uh, healing is the goal. Healing is the children's bread. And so I, just, I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. He said, for there is no revelation that people will get loose or cast off restraint and uh, where there's no gaze upon God, where there's no gaze upon his, his oracle or his lively oracle, where there's, where there's no constantly, constant looking unto the revelation, where there's, no, where there's no vision, the people will cast off restraint. And we're in a time now where things are happening to the church, but they're happening to the church for a purpose. God is bringing the church closer to him because the church is his bride, right? And the church many times, maybe not all, but some, I'm not speaking, uh, I'm speaking holistically. uh, But the church uh, has to be separated from the world, right? And so in order to separate the church from the world, God starts to allowing things to happen to bring us into his divine presence so that he can begin to talk to us and re-educate us, our thinking, and what he's saying to us as we draw close to him and he begins to remove things out of our lives that will hinder his purpose and plan for our individual lives. It's not complicated. And so what God does, he's allowing a lot of things that are happening now to the church at large. But his purpose is the same. He wants the church to go out victoriously. And the church must not go out all beat up and everything. It's like Israel. When they went out from Egypt, they went out, they had the spoils of the, the goods of the world. Uh, uh, the Egyptian, which is a type of world, they begin to have those, uh, uh, they begin to get those things uh, in plenty, plenty. And then they went out victoriously because of the hand of the Almighty God. And so when God takes his church out of the world, it's not going to be a defeated church. It's going to be a church that is filled with the power and the presence of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But for now, it is important, Peter said, if necessary, we may be in a little heaviness through the trials that we're facing so that the trying of our faith, the testing of our faith, or the genuine element of our faith may come to surface, right? We have the faith of God, and so that faith of God is an overcoming kind of thing. It helps us overcome over and over and over and over again through every trial, but you'll never know that unless... You know, you're put in a situation and you fall on your face before God and cry. Say, God, help me. Then God bails you out and begin to show you his grace and his love and his power to deliver us in any situation that we find ourselves in. Amen. So it's all for a purpose. God has a purpose in mind when he's allowing things to happen to us. And uh, so I'm thinking uh, about an example. Um, We see Jonah. God gave him a revelation about Nineveh. And as he gave him the revelation about Nineveh then, uh, and told him to go and preach, then Jonah did not want to go. Now, uh, This revelation was not only for Nineveh, but it was for his own safety and, and, and health, right? So Jonah chose not to go. What happened? He, he literally died. Now, he uh, was thrown overboard, and God had prepared a fish for him. And had he not went back, gone back and embraced the revelation, he would have been a goner. His life would have been cut short. Nineveh would have never repented. So the list can go on. So the revelation is for our own lives as well, right? So he says where there's no revelation, the people cast off restraint and this kind of thing here. So, And so you can see in Jonah... You see in Saul the king how 
God told Saul, he said, this is what this was God. As he made him king, he said, I want you now, in a, in a particular time and zone, he said, I want you to destroy all of the Amalekites, everything. And Saul simply destroyed what he wanted to destroy, right? And so when Samuel came back, the Lord was terribly displeased. And, uh, and so anyway, then uh, it ended up costing him his kingdom. But the revelation came from the Lord for him, right? I, I'm, I'm, I know this is maybe some, some big, big example, but the point that I'm trying to make is what the Lord was saying is that, okay, without the uh, uh, revelation from God, people may cast off restraint. There's so many things that can pull your attention now. A dime a dozen. You know, I mean, you can look at the Facebook, you look at the internet, you look at the, uh, the technology that they have today, and people's head are just buried in these cell phones and on Facebook for hours. Even the Christians. And so, you know, that can just go on and go on and on for days and weeks and months and months. And, uh, but the Lord said, where there is no revelation, the people get loose. The people cast off restraint, right? So what God does is allows things to happen so that that cell phone will be put down some and they start really turning to God. I don't know what I'm going to do, so I need to call on the Lord. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hallelujah. So that helps people begin to start hearing what God is saying individually to their lives. So that now they can get back on track. Somebody say get back on track. And so there's a purpose for things happening in our lives, brothers and sisters. It's not all bad. It's a divine purpose in mind when God allows things to happen to you and I. God is interested in getting some real productivity out of our individual lives. Every individual, God is looking to do something with our lives, you know. And so he is not satisfied with just, uh, you know, we may come to worship, you know, and we feel good and we get the word from the Lord and we go out. We may go back to just doing ordinary stuff, right? And not really thinking about God. Now, that doesn't happen to everybody, but I'm trying to make a point. It may not be really <clears throat> thinking about God as we should. But when the trials and the challenges come, most of the time you're going to be praying, right? Trying to get some relief. Isn't that right? So it's not all bad. So the point that I'm making is that uh, God was saying embrace now the things that he's saying, the revelation, the visions, and so on. So we see Saul uh, cast off restraint. We see, uh, I, I have this um, testimony about my, my father who we buried on Friday. So many good things were said about him. 96 years old and but one day he was plowing in the field. He wasn't saved. He had been taught the right way but he just kind of wanted to do. He wasn't ready to get saved. He just was young and he wanted to do things. Live his life and maybe after he got old he'd Give the Lord the remaining part of his life. So, but one day he was in the field plowing. And the Lord came to him. And he spoke to him. And he said, if you will walk before me and let me basically live my life through you, I'll bless your children. Now bless your children's children. Well, he didn't have anybody, I think, at that time, he didn't have any. But the vision, but the revelation that came from God, he obeyed it. And he wouldn't let it go. He went through so many challenges, but he wouldn't let the revelation go. And he lived a good old life. Ninety-six years old, six children, sons and daughters, pastors and, and ministers and deacons in the ministry. And all of them are saved. 
my mom and so on. But I'm, the point that I'm making is that it was that revelation that he stayed with. When times got tough, he stayed with it. When it looks like he, he faced a lot of rejection, but he stayed with the revelation. He stayed with it. He kept it before him. And I remember him telling me, he said, he said God came to me when I was plowing. And he told me if I would say, serve him. He said, I'll bless your children and your children's children. And he said, I've done the best I know how to keep that vision. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I heard old man Paul, the apostle Paul, he was on the Damascus Road. And something happened to Paul. Paul, a light, light came from heaven. And in that light, there was a vision. There was a, there was a, a voice from heaven. And ask him, why was he persecuting him? And he said, who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus of Nazareth, whom you're persecuting. And then he told him what to do. And Paul, wherever he went and got a chance to share the vision that he got from heaven that literally changed his destiny completely. This is what he concluded. He says, O King Agrippa, and I was not disobedient. To the heavenly vision. It is the vision. When God gives the vision. Hallelujah. That is going to make the difference in our lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's not how smart we are. It's not how wise we are. Not how holy. It is the vision. That God gives. That we embrace it. And he will bring the rest to pass. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. 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 I am saying in summary, I'm saying in summary, God, healing may be one of the things that he used to preserve your life and my life. Healing may be, or he may use the vehicle of bringing healing to us. It may open you up for the blessings that God has for you. God's healing may be the thing, or one of the things to make you're more committed to God. The vision of healing may uh, be the thing that God used to get your job back, to get your marriage back. Hallelujah, to bring your father back, your son, your daughter, your mother back home. That vision that God gives to bring healing to our heart, it is extremely important. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. He knows what's in the heart. He knows what we're facing. He knows what we will face three, five, ten, twenty years down the road. He knows exactly what we'll face. But if you and I will embrace healing and restoration, we'll embrace that God wants to do something to our, in our lives. If we'll embrace it and not discount it, but we'll embrace it with our whole hearts, then God Almighty will do the rest by his mighty power. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. And he's great. In conclusion. God's revelation is designed to help bring people. Help us in our walk with God. Sometimes a person may say they've got a vision. And they have no such conviction in their hearts. To live a life that's holy. If God gives a vision from himself, what's included is the need and the desire to live a holy, consecrated life. And no matter whether, you know, some people have gotten a vision from, from, from they say from God, and they live like they want to, and they feel like, well, just because, if I'm fulfill, fulfill, fulfilling that, he's going to be pleased. But God is pleased whenever that uh, we know that God is holy. And everything that comes from him is holy, right? And his children must be holy, right? Now we take Joseph for an example. Hallelujah. Joseph went through. God, you remember his dream? And uh, uh, vision in that uh, Hebrew could mean a dream as well. Joseph had a dream. And this dream that he had, he told his brethren. It got him into some trouble. And that man went through, didn't he? And, you know, I know his brothers or some of the others saying, you're yeah, right. Uh-huh. If God spoke to him, he wouldn't be down in that dungeon, right? 
If God spoke to him, he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be in that situation. But God spoke to him. And he kept the vision there. And he behaved himself in a manner that was acceptable to God, although God had given him that vision, right? So things were not pleasing. The woman lied on him, got him thrown in jail. But everywhere he went, the Lord was with him, and it was obvious that the man behaved himself in such a way that it brought glory and honor to God. When, hallelujah. Glory to God. So God doesn't give us a vision, and, and one can say, well, God told me to do this here, and then I, uh, we have the liberty to live like we want to and treat people any way we want to. We can't do that. That's not, that's not, in, that's not walking worthy of the, the calling, Right? It's, you know, when a person is walking worthy of, of some blessing that God has given them, then they walk in a certain manner. Constant reverence and respect for the one that gave to them. Isn't that right? And so that's what he was saying. He was also, uh, and I'm concluding this. So we look at Joseph here. Uh, he, uh, I made a list and uh, it says uh, he was very respectful and of good behavior. Before he came into the fulfillment of his vision, right? He knew how to treat women, right? He knew how to submit to authority. He knew how to wait on God. He knew how to forgive others. Now you can find that in, 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 in as you read that. But he learned. He didn't just. He didn't do what he wanted to. Do. I don't know. I just. I, this is what God gave me. Some. He didn't. He, he didn't have this and do and ha- felt the liberty and the license to do it. Anything he wanted to do. He was respectful toward God and respectful toward others uh, and respectful toward authority. And he, and he walked as, you know, as a person walking with God just observing his whole life. That's how he walked. He walked. He was conscious of God's eyes on him. Not to condemn him, but God seeing and understanding everything. And so that's how and why God was able to bring him to the fulfillment. And then let's take David. David was a man here. He knew that he was coming in, into the kingship. But David, the Bible says, if, on more than one occasion, if you read in Samuel, you'll see where the Bible says this was happening to David, but David behaved himself wisely. Wiser than all the others, he, he behaved himself. In other words, so much so that others could see and see that David was behaving himself in such a way and they had no problem understanding this man is going somewhere. This man is not going to be in this place long because that man is behaving himself like a person of character. He understands the God that he's serving. Isn't that right? And so it is when God gives us that which he has for us to do. David learned how to war, right? Before he came to kingship, he learned how to war. He learned how to behave himself before the brethren and the king. He learned how to praise and to sing through all the situations that he went through, right? There are things that God has for us to learn while, before we come into the fullness of any true purpose and vision. But it's important. That we keep our eyes upon the vision. Because without a vision, the people cast off restraint. They do loosely, right? They get carnal, right? Without a vision. So the vision for this people is to bring healing to the heart. To to set at liberty them that have been bruised and battered and wounded and rejected and abandoned the vision for this house is for and not only for this house but for this people is that God would restore us hallelujah to the place of wholeness glory to God where our perceptions will change hallelujah we can see things differently we can see things uh, through God's eyes and we can love one another when people mistreat us we won't go back and talk about them we won't avoid them we won't shun them hallelujah but we'll love because God has healed our hurts he's healed our lack of trust he's healed abuses that we've gone through he's made us whole 
because he's made us whole now we are a new people indeed and the manifestation of this newness is operating in our lives so that we can sing praise and when we go through things we can go through it with long suffering and patience and we can go through it with a good attitude because God has brought healing to us in the midst of all that we've gone through and God will surely bring us to the area of promotion as he promised because he's faithful in all that he does come on let's thank the Lord hallelujah <laughs> glory to God glory to God God is faithful so he's faithful so we will behave ourselves wisely and we will learn those things that God has for us people are facing things we all are facing things but don't be distracted let's not be distracted by the things that we're facing right because the Bible says all that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions right many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers them out of them all so we have hope in God we're never going through things with no hope we're going through God, and we're going through with God, and we're going through by the grace of God, and we're going to come out. We're going to come out in great victory, right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're coming out in great victory, so I'm pausing here. I want you to bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you right now. Thank you, first of all, for the move that you did earlier in our midst, Lord. And my prayer is that everyone that you intended to touch, lives were touched. We thank you, Holy Father. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I ask that the word, Lord, will not fall on the stony ground, but on good ground. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, Father. Oh, we open ourselves to hear and embrace what you desire to do in our lives. Oh, healing the brokenness of heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Setting at liberty them that are bruised. Set the captives free. Hallelujah, glory to God, that we may come into our full destiny by the grace and power of our Lord. And Lord, I ask that the power of my Lord be great upon each one here for your divine praise and for your glory. We thank you, Master, and we're giving your name to honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. I saw your 